Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so today we're doing a case for lower extremity claudication. Uh, next slide. So uh, this is a 71-year-old female with history of uh, left lower extremity uh, recurrent claudication. And she has claudication symptoms after one to two blocks. Uh, pertinent medical history, including diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and, of course, PAD. She's on uh, these medications, including aspirin and celostazole. Uh, never smoker. Next slide, please. So uh, pertinent surgical history. She actually had a right fempop bypass uh, in 2012, which remains patent. And uh, just to note, this is a high anastomosis at the common femoral artery and external iliac artery. Uh, left SFA, multiple stents with multiple revisions. Uh, most recently, she had a uh, transradial intervention for her uh, left SFA uh, instant restenosis due to stent fracture. Uh, we treated this with angioplasty and the self-expanding stent. Um, transradial. Uh, transradial, uh, last time. Uh, uh, and about a year ago. Um, so <coughs> her labs are uh, within normal limits. On her physical examination, uh, her left radial pulse is uh, perfect, uh, two plus, uh, palpable, non-palpable bilateral lower extremity pulses with um, doppelable pulses right greater than left. Uh, an arterial duplex demonstrated a patent left SFA stent with a threefold increase in the mid stent uh, velocities concerning for restenosis. Uh, additionally, her, um, her uh, ABIs were uh, down below the knee. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is her angiogram from uh, about a year ago, showing an area of severe stenosis uh, within the uh, adductor canal, uh, area of stent fracture as well. So next slide, please. Uh, we treated this with a uh, balloon angioplasty as well as a 6 by 80 Everflex self-expanding stent. So next slide, please. Um, so again, 71-year-old female with uh, the mentioned comorbidities. Uh, left lower extremity claudication with concern for mid SFA uh, instant restenosis. Um, so the options we considered were, of course, surgical, um, DCB, atherectomy, angioplasty, and stent placement. Um, so uh, we're going to do a left radial approach, and we chose this approach due to that uh, right uh, fempop bypass with the high anastomosis. So this makes a radial uh, choice ideal here. Um, so. Uh, we'll you know, at least do an angioplasty and we'll see what we uh, need to do today. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna show you what we've done so far. Um, so basically we came uh, left radial uh, and we're able to uh, get down the arch. Actually, it was really easy to get down the arch so we didn't have to do a lot of work. That's just a Benson wire. We put a five, six slender down. Uh, then we were able to cannulate the left uh, iliac with just a Sarah radial catheter. Uh, we've got that down to the common femoral, and we're doing some runs here. So this is uh, the SFA, and you can see there's basically instant restenosis, pretty close to where the, the previous intervention was done. Um, you can see, sorry, someone else is pushing buttons. Uh, you can see there's the old stent fracture, but the there's uh, the new stents are through it, so that's not really an issue. Um, we did the runoff all the way down to the foot, which um, hasn't really changed much. She still has a single vessel runoff. Uh, it's an anterior tibia. Yeah, through the anterior tibial into the foot. And uh, there you go, just to show you the runoff. Which hasn't, this, this runoff hasn't changed much uh, since, uh, since the beginning. So uh, our plan today is really just to uh, try to hopefully just angioplasty all of this um, and maybe DCB. So our initial plan was to put in a, a six French destination, uh, which is the narrow, des the slender destination for R2P, which is the radial to peripheral intervention for Terumo. Uh, but since we're actually going to just balloon it, actually, she's pretty short. So we're going to try and do this all through a six French guide, um, sort of the old way we did it just to show you. Because I think we have two cases later on today where we're going to show you the sheath and how that, that's a little bit more helpful. Um, so also a little bit helpful to show you exactly sort of the limitations of the intervention here. Um, so basically, uh, what we have is a six French um, MP guide from uh, Boston Scientific. It's 110 centimeters in length, uh, which is, gets you right into the proximal SFA in, in this patient. Um, we have an Amplatz wire across the occlusion. We used just an angled glide cath to get across. Uh, nothing, nothing complicated and, and, there. And glide wire. And, and a glide wire, wire, yeah. And a glide wire to get across. And then we placed an Amplatz wire down distally into the uh, popliteal. And uh, now we're going to just try and do a predilatation with a, a five millimeter balloon. Um, I think what we pulled here is just a regular five Evercross, which is uh, 135. And we're going to see if this will actually reach us all the way down there. 
Um, if not, then we'll have to actually put in a sheath and do the rest of it that way. So, uh, can you repeat what guide wire are you using? Uh, the length of the wire and the what type of guide so wire are you using? Yeah, that's uh, so it's a t it's yeah, a yeah, it's an exchange length amplat. It's two hundred eighty or two sixty. Two sixty. Which we're running into an issue here because it's actually not long enough uh, to do the exchange because it's a one thirty five. That's exactly what I'm And we have the wire down pretty far, so we're gonna try and see. We have a Medtronic. Uh, what's the thing called? Metacross, which is rapid exchange. I'm not totally sure it's going to fit through the guide cath, so we're going to try it. If not, this, then we're going to have to switch out for the sheath. So to yeah, so basically what we're going to try and do now to avoid having to do these r these exchanges, we're going to switch out to a, a longer 018 wire. Yeah. Oh shit, that's not going to work either. Doesn't go. No. Can we get the can we get that nano cross? So this is real life, right? Yeah. <laughs> this this is you guys are getting real life experiences and it, it, it's, it's kind of nice to see how so these problems are solved because that's that's the real va value of, of then you can't do the watching the these cases. You still need the if the case wire. went perfectly oh, you the smoothly and so then you just wouldn't get, get nearly balloon. as much out of it. Yeah. Like Absolutely. Like like yeah, so we're going to try to exchange this out for, do we have a long V18? Like a yeah, 300. Yeah. Uh, 300. All right, so we're going to try the 300 V18, see if that gives us a little bit more length. And we were literally short by like 10 centimeters. Rahul, I noted that you started with a SARA catheter for this Actually, you know, procedure. Is that seen. your no, standard I mean, catheter to go down just, in the leg? It's really more so what just to get the down the arch. Cross? So we're going to sort of show you the difficulties okay. of how we used to do this with the guide. Because obviously with the oh, with the Guardian thing? and the hubs and stuff, you, you yeah. Yeah. A lot, chew a lot of length. And then this afternoon, we show you some of the other ones. So hopefully this last uh, extra 20 or 30 centimeters will be enough to get us to where we need to go. Since we are running into some length issues, um, can you let us know how tall this patient is and what you sort of think the maximum five height of a patient? Uh, for it's 5'1". All right. Uh, so we have to remove the toy because we will not reach down there. Yeah. So here, uh, we're going to show you. We just So what we ended up doing was actually re-stenting that segment. Uh, Angela's just pushing our wire back down here. Yeah. So we restented that segment. Uh, the DCB doesn't fit through the six French guide, even though it should. I'm not quite sure why that happened. But um, anyway, so we, we uh, re-stented uh, that area. We took it to a six, it. Uh, put a six millimeter uh, and truss stent, um, then balloon dilated that up to six millimeters. And so we're going to see hopefully what this looks like here. Can you floor? Because the Pacific didn't really change much uh, an yeah. area where it was a new fracture of the previous yeah. stent. All right, you get it? <coughs> Um, the previous 10 was also 6. But uh, if you see, there is still some uh, intimal hyperplasia at the end, so it doesn't uh, really co -opt. It's not all. It doesn't uh, go all the way to the edges of the previous 10. So we balloon dilated initially with 5. Hold on, hold on. There was an area of fracture that we didn't have much... Uh, you got to stop holding the, sh the guide. Uh, but you placed it through a 6 French guiding catheter? Yes. Correct. Floor. How long is the guiding catheter? 110. Okay. This is the runway? Yeah, the runway yes, guide. Yes. Okay, hit the run. All right, good. That looks good. Looks good. good. I oh. think. All right, so you can see sort of the difficulties that we used to have with doing PAD. Um, you, you'll see them go a little bit smoother this, uh, hopefully a little bit smoother this afternoon um, when you put a sheath down, which just came out, I don't know, Aaron, you know, about, about two months ago, I think, or maybe a month and a half ago. They uh, finally released it. We're still missing stuff, right? I mean, the, even with the sheath, the issue is we still have an issue with length with uh, the wires. You still only have 300 centimeter wires and 200 centimeter balloon, you know, balloons on 200 centimeter shafts or 180 centimeter shafts. So we still have an issue of, of wires, which seems sort of basic, but uh, um, it, it's getting there. They're getting there. It's definitely much better than what we had last year. So w w we put back the catheter in and we exchanged it with a V18. And the V18 is the only wire. The 0 0.014 wires and the 0 0.018 uh, wires are the only ones that they are 300. The thing here was the guiding uh, sheath was inside the stent. Yeah. So then you have the stent. That it's straight shot for the stent. For the uh, for the new stand to go to the to where you we want to right. stand, we didn't have to target. We didn't have to navigate into the SFA every yeah. time. So great solution, great. Yeah. And so we're gonna just put the show you how to put the band on. Um, so for this particular case, we imagine we stuck a little higher up. So we're gonna actually be choosing a large TR band for this closure. We have our um, area of skin entry here, but our actual arteriotomy is probably down more here. So um, we're first of all. I'm going to apply the band, but before we do, we can connect 20 cc's of air into the syringe and just keep that connected. And go ahead and apply the band. Yeah. Yep. 
Then you just want to make sure your uh, green dot is basically where the art uh, arteriotomy is. Uh, make sure you're all lined up. We're good. So we're going to inflate the full 20 cc's. And you're going to keep your thumb on the syringe here. And so you're simply just going to slowly remove the sheath and discard it. And then this is see-through, the TR band. So um, you're going to slowly remove air until you see a small flash of uh, blood coming out of the uh, dermatotomy. So the other thing I'm doing here is I'm actually occluding the ulnar artery mm -hmm. um, to make sure I still have a waveform. Um, so I know that the radial artery, even though it's hemostatic, it's actually occluded. The, uh, the radial artery is still open underneath. So when I occlude the ulnar, we still have a waveform. You know, we are concerned you know, about getting a hematoma. Sometimes, um, especially when we're putting in the, the bigger sheets, uh, we'll put in actually, we'll put on two bands. Um, I don't know where we came up with that idea, but it seems to work pretty well. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank Great case.